he's trouble, you know, has problems. A painful admission from the father of a suspect linked to a string of burglaries and possibly a Malibu murder mystery. As investigators build a case against Anthony Ruda, his father is speaking out. That's right, and we're learning more tonight about the suspect's troubled past. CBS News' Tom Waits spoke with the father. He's live in Calabasas now. Tom? And Susie and Jeff, I can tell you tonight that that father was very emotional as he talked about his son, and he says it is possible that he could be behind that shooting death of the father at the campground. I am shocked, kind of worry about him. The father of Anthony Rauda speaking out tonight on the arrest of his son. Rauda was taken into custody for a string of burglaries in the Malibu Canyon area. The sheriff's department blurred his face because they are still interviewing witnesses. Rauda's father also asked us that we not show his face. He says his son has not worked in years and has mental issues. He's been living in the, out in the wilderness in Malibu out that way for, I would say, 15 or 20 years. Investigators say Rauda burglarized this building on September 30th. Security cameras showed Rauda wearing tactical gear and carrying a rifle when he broke in. I don't know why would he have, uh, you know, guns because most of the time he's breaking in because of food. The sheriff says they are investigating whether Rauda may be linked to the shooting death of Tristan Baudet back on June 22nd at Malibu State Park. Baudet was camping there with his two young daughters when he was shot. I asked Rauda what he would say to his son about the burglaries and any other crimes he may have committed. Be honest, and I hope he hasn't done it. To be honest, so the family could be in peace. And... Uh, I'm here to help them, whatever I can do. And sheriff's investigators say they continue their forensic analysis on the evidence that they found with Rauda. As far as residents here, they say they already feel safer knowing he's been arrested. Reporting live in Calabasas, I'm Tom Waite, CBS 2 News. Tom, thank you. Mysterious discovery in the Antelope Valley. Detectives are investigating remains found in Little Rock. They removed those remains near a home on 106th Street near Tejon Road. Now, detectives are trying to figure out if the findings were human or animal. And now to a developing story, devastation everywhere. Towns left in ruins. And tonight, the death toll is now at six after Hurricane Michael slammed into Florida's panhandle yesterday. Well, today, heartbroken homeowners are returning to the rubble along the Gulf Coast. Officials are warning more lives may be in danger as the storm continues to move up the Carolinas. Now, CBS 2's Crystal Cruz is here now with more of the most powerful hurricane to ever hit our region. Yeah, and we're talking about millions of people, a million and a half people without power across the southeast tonight. And people are looking at months, even years, to rebuild build in these hardest hit areas. From above, the extent of the destruction becomes clear. FEMA calls Mexico Beach, Florida ground zero. It looks like a bomb went off. Entire neighborhoods are flattened from Hurricane Michael's 155 mile per hour winds. Everything else looks intact. Sounds good. Rescue crews are going door to door, including this team from Louisiana. The damage looks familiar to them. What we're standing in right now is what Katrina did to New Orleans. Among the dead, 11-year-old Sarah Radney, who died in Georgia when a metal carport crashed into her grandparents' house. And in North Carolina, a man died when a tree fell right onto his car. State officials say 285 people stayed in Mexico Beach despite a mandatory evacuation order. It's unknown if all of them survived. Many other nearby cities were also severely damaged. The roof and walls have peeled away from the gym at Jinx Middle School in Panama City. Some say they've lost everything. Have no jobs, nowhere to go, can't get out, um, don't have a lot of money. What do you do next? Now Michael is moving up the East Coast, bringing major flooding to parts of Virginia and the Carolinas. Florida's governor is asking people to stay away from the most devastated areas until some of the trees and power lines can be clear. I'm Crystal Cruz. I'll send it back to you guys. All right, Crystal, thank you. Well, here at home, we are seeing high surf along the coast. Advisories are in effect right now. You can also expect strong rip currents through tomorrow night and possibly into the weekend as well. Garth Kemp will have more on the waves and Hurricane Michael just minutes away. Now to a flag flap in Little Tokyo. Someone stole Old Glory from a museum dedicated 
to World War II Japanese soldiers. As you saw, they have the suspect on video, and they are still searching for him right now. CBS 2's Greg Mills is live in the little Tokyo area of downtown L.A. with the very latest. Greg. And Jeff, this monument to those uh, soldiers, those brave soldiers, has been here for 19 years. And every day, since day one, the flag has flown over this until now. Picture this. 120,000 Japanese on the West Coast, about half of them U.S. citizens, ordered into internment camps two months after Japan bombed Pearl Harbor. But a year later, it was determined we needed them to help us win the war. Perhaps surprisingly, thousands volunteered to serve this country that had locked them up. These guys, I mean, they fought with honor. They were in, in an internment camp. Robin Tyus admires these soldiers he never met. He learned their U.S. history in his daily walks here. He still can't believe someone stole the American flag that flew over their monument with their motto proudly displayed, go for broke. This guy stole their flag. He hasn't been caught, but what he did here was caught on security camera. The CEO of Go For Broke says, we're disappointed that our flag was taken, although we don't think there's any evidence of ill intent toward our veterans. These veterans were war heroes. In fact, the 442nd and 100th are, get this, the most decorated military unit for their size and length of service. Instead of giving them the salute they deserve, this guy stole their old glory. Like I said, that's really despicable. Uh, Susie and Jeff, I knew a little bit about this uh, tonight when I took on this assignment. Learned a whole lot more. And if you'd like to learn a whole lot more, too, please go to our website, cbsla.com, and click on the link that will take you to goforbroke.org. Reporting live from Little Tokyo, Greg Mills, CBS 2 News. Greg, thank you so much. Now to a break in court for disgraced Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein. A judge in New York today dismissed a felony sexual assault count that Weinstein was facing. The accuser is actress Lucia Evans. Now she claimed that Weinstein forced her to perform a sex act on him back in 2004 at his Miramax office. There are concerns about the credibility of a witness. Weinstein still faces five other felony counts. He's still looking at a potential life exposure. From the um, from the remaining counts, so he's he's this is this is like you know if you're trying to cut down a forest, which we shouldn't do because we love trees, this is one tree. The rest of the forest still stands. And Weinstein's attorney wants all those counts thrown out, and dozens of women have accused Weinstein of sexual abuse. Kanye West, a political pawn or a passionate President Trump supporter, the rapper went off on a wild rant today in the Oval Office. He might not have expected to have a crazy <laughs> like Kanye West. If he don't look good, we don't look good. West rambled about racism, mental illness, and much more during a meeting about issues affecting the black community. Some critics say West was being used as a stunt to attract more midterm votes from, from black voters. He entirely believes that he can put Kanye West up in the White House with a campaign hat on and siphon a few votes or cause the black community to have a confrontation with itself about its relationship to the Democratic Party. In the meantime, the NRA is praising Kanye for his speech at the White House after he said illegal guns are the problem and not legal guns. And protecting your device mid-fall, why cracked phone screens may soon be a thing of the past. Also roughed up, then tied up, thieves ransack an elderly woman's home. Tonight, the violent attack in search for suspects. It self-destructed at the auction. The question now is, did the woman with the windy bid still go through with the Banksy purchase? Hearing crystal clear for the first time, still ahead a young girl's emotional reaction. Hey everybody, I'm Garth Kemp. Well, it's been another great day today. Can we keep it going? We'll get you to the weekend coming up. I will own a big portion of this airline. I'm going for blood. Taking on an airline after she and her emotional support squirrel were kicked off the plane. And here's a look at the guest tonight on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert.